Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about reversing a string. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, a interview question that was posed to me asked me to reverse a string without using a, any built-in functions. What is the point if there are built-in functions that are there to help? Well, uh, this is one of those situations where if you remember your old math teacher, he or she probably asked you to write out your equations instead of just putting your answer in the in the box. And that is primarily because they want to figure out if you know how to arrive at the answer, if your calculations are correct. And that is literally, it's the same thing here. They are interested in understanding whether or not you understand how a string works in your programming language, how to do it without using the built-in functions. If you know the logic, like um, basically you would split the string, something like that, and then you would loop through the array. Uh, there are ways, different ways that you can do it backwards or forwards and then position, constructing a new string basically, or you can, you know, replace them as is if you convert them to a character array like there is depending on the language there are many ways of doing this and the solution that you propose will show basically if you understand the problem and the reason why I wanted to take this question is because this is a very good example I think of a concept that I talked to a few people about and I actually I went as far as to just uh, to remove alerts for comments on these old videos about like the times when I show you things like vanilla JavaScript solutions or like very low, uh, more lower level concepts uh, in say React rather than just use whatever they have pro provided to you. I show you how to do it without like using a lot of frameworks and extra libraries and stuff like that. You kind of just, I kind of just do it. And the feedback in many cases I've gotten is, oh, well, Frederick, why aren't you using this or that? Or, oh, well, you're making this extra complicated because you could just use this library or that library. And I kind of go, sure, yeah, I could if I was working on a Greenfield project and I was allowed to do that. But the sad truth is that that's not always the case. An example is this thing that you're facing right now. They are not interested. This is for testing purposes. But the reality is that that is actually how it can go quite often in the real world as well, where you might know how to do something or you think that you know how to do something, but you don't actually know how to do it. Uh, you know how to consume a library that knows how to do it. A very concrete example of um, of this in action is actually happening now when I work at my current job. Um, you, I had a subscriber who asked a little while ago, Frederick, um, you have said that it's better for me to focus on React and learning a JavaScript framework rather than learning vanilla JavaScript, but that seems to be counterintuitive because I think I mentioned at some point that it's important to learn vanilla JavaScript as well. And so he of course feels that I send mixed messages messages and so I explained to him I'm not saying that you when I say that you should as a beginner focus on learning an SBA framework or like a JavaScript framework it is not because I'm saying that that is more important that that is the only thing you should learn I'm saying that you are a rookie programmer who needs to start somewhere you need to start somewhere and the, in my opinion, way to go about starting somewhere is in order of relevance. And if you look at the vast majority of what front-end developers are doing these days, it is mostly tied into some type of front-end framework. Therefore, it makes a lot of sense for you to begin there. But that doesn't mean that you should stop there. That means that you learn that thing until that's boring and you kind of know how to do it. And then I promise you, either by your own, like either you do it yourself or you're going to be forced to do it at, in many cases, uh, you're going to learn vanilla JavaScript. I promise you. You're, it's very unlikely that you're going to get away from it. And you're going to start to understand how to use some of like the native browser APIs and like more lower level mechanics. It's inevitable because no product is 
all in React or all in Angular. It's, it, it's rare that it's like completely exclusively that way. Uh, and even if there's one project, there's, that's not all the projects. And an example would be where I, what I do right now, where we have a primarily React built application in the front end, frame, in front end project, and there's a need to optimize certain components on the page with just vanilla JavaScript. And in order for me to be able to do any of that stuff, like we implemented our own router. The reason we did that? Well, because React Router is kind of big in comparison to what we needed to do. So some of our more senior engineers built a solution that works pretty gosh darn well. Routing works, uh, we don't really need all the extra other stuff that comes with React Router. Uh, just the other day I was creating a controller, uh, like an MVC controller, but for the client side, that hooked up two uh, components, like one, uh, two different React components. So they, they, it became a, uh, a message bus between these two, uh, two, two elements on the page. And that's breaking the rule of, you know, everything should live in React and it should like, if these two components should ideally, you should allow React to handle all of this stuff, right? It kind of breaks that idea, but we know what we're doing, so it works. And that's only possible because the people who are maintaining this code, they actually understand how all of these interactions work, how like the the lower level details of what React is doing, how does that actually work, and uh, how does the DOM element work, and so forth. And we created uh, a pub sub solution as an example uh, and that's also in a similar for a similar reason so we register it uh, it runs on the page as this entity that just takes care of message dispatching and make sure that the right components are getting it and that is something that sure most a lot of people would use a framework or a library to do that but for the use case that we have it doesn't make any sense and we have the competency to build it ourselves so we actually reduce the amount of code that we need we don't have to have all these other extra dependencies which have other the benefits as well. I'm not saying that you should always write your own thing, but in many cases you can actually do a lot of stuff uh, or you, in some cases you have to know the lower de level details and know how to do things without having someone else basically do the work for you because that is what you do when you have a framework. Someone else does the job for you. It's not you. It's not your code if that makes sense. Even though you're like you get a lot of help if that uh, that's basically what I'm saying. And uh, I mean uh, another cool thing is that uh, um, so we created a fetching solution where basically we had a, like a network client and instead of using something like Axios or like this, like the most obvious thing, we wanted to create a self-caching solution and so we wrapped like the native fetch fun functionality in our own handler that has a local cache which means that it throttles so even if like and which is pretty nice because then uh, all the components and like everything that we're doing on the entire sys uh, in the entire application and all the other applications uh, has uh, it's uh, automatic caching or like it doesn't have to we don't have to concern ourselves with like uh, spamming network requests when we actually already have certain pieces of data so what i want you to take away from this is that it is great that you know how to use built-in functions and so forth and in many cases it's going to be perfectly fine for you to just use a library or a built-in methods and functionality within the language to do what you need to be need to <laughs> need to right but in some cases it, you should know that that's not always going to be an option. In this case, it's for an interview, and then you're just trying to figure out if you know the lower de level details of what you're doing. But in the real wild world out there, when you work as a software developer, this is also a reality. You will not always be able to use your favorite specific tool to do something and so forth. And in many cases, uh, you're going to have to be able to figure out how to use you had to do without certain things. I'm not saying now that you should go and become freaky and try to like put yourself in hard mode and try to figure out how to do everything in say vanilla JavaScript or with binary or whatever like to make it extra hard. I'm just saying that it's very good for you to realize that you have to start by learning the most common tools of the trade and then when you feel like you sort of understand that expand your knowledge and start poking around a little bit with things that are maybe not the most critical immediately but the things that are sort of adjacent as an example if you're going to be a front-end developer 
start with the obvious HTML, CSS, and like the JavaScript frameworks and so forth. And then when you sort of feel like you know that, see what you can do with just vanilla JavaScript. Can you build the page with just that? And see like where does that lead? Because I promise you, it's very useful information uh, to have with you. And in many cases, you will be surprised at how often that knowledge is going to be extremely useful for you. In some, I would even go as far as to say that uh, you might not even get certain jobs if all you know is, say, React or Angular or something like that. Have a great day.